it is midnight, so I guess it is Sunday morning, and I promised you guys a Sunday vlog. On Instagram, you guys voted, and you guys wanted a vlog today, and that means the plan with me will be posted on Wednesday. I'm actually sitting on the floor in my dining room. I was looking through some home decor magazines and getting ideas and inspiration, and I thought I would take a second and chat about some things that I've been thinking about lately. I think that Vlogmas, well, halfway through Vlogmas, things became a whirlwind um, as far as the channel goes, and it grew at a rapid pace and got so much attention from so many people. I think I now realize how people can get caught up in that and let their egos get the best of them and let that sense of validation for your hard work like kind of pull you away from why you do something in the first place. I think the other reason I'm thinking about this a lot is because over the last week I've received several comments around like, oh, now that the channel's growing I think it'll feel less like a community. Um, as the channel grows I hope you don't change. As the channel grows I hope that there's connection there. And that's the validation of why I created this because this is about you and me as a collective us. When I set out to do this work and use this platform, that is what it was all about. And I know that if I stay true to that piece of it, that's how I ensure the success of this channel. It is not about, or it cannot be measured or validated or felt important based on the number of views or thumbs ups or comments or subscriber numbers like that's what it can't get about and I feel like part of me has gotten wrapped up into that all of that will come when I stay true to why I did this and that is solely to bring some joy and light and create an impact that is rooted in kindness and rooted in us becoming better people and taking care of ourselves and taking care of other people and spreading kindness no matter what. And I want you all to know is that is something that I'm very cognizant of and very aware of and very focused on. This is about us. And as big as the channel gets, I'm still going to know what's happening and I'm still going to be accessible and I'm still going to talk to all of you and I'm still going to build community because I think no matter the number we can still do that now the realistic side of it is is we're edging towards 25,000 of you and one of me so will I be able to answer every comment and will I be able to answer every DM on Instagram and all of that no it's not humanly possible. But what I can do is to make an effort to connect you with one another and it all to be umbrellaed under kindness and our own personal growth and betterment. And that's what I'm determined to do. So I want you to know and rest assured that I am cognizant enough and reflective enough and mature enough to know when I'm feeling wrapped up in the other shenanigans and to step back and be like, nope, this is the vision. Stay aligned to that. Stick with your core and keep it moving. Um, because that's how the success will come. I don't even know what that success is because it's going to be measured through our community and our community's impact. So that's what I'm thinking about. And that's what's keeping me up right now. <laughs>
Uh, yeah, I feel good. I just got out of the shower. I'm all cleaned up. And right now I'm going to show you, yesterday I made a maple latte and I showed it over on my Instagram and all of you asked how I made it and I'm gonna show you really quick. Um, so let's go ahead and get that done. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to get a cup to a cup and a half of almond milk foaming up. And I picked up the Breville hot chocolate maker but it also does cappuccino and lattes. So we're gonna put it on the latte setting and there's like a little motorized whisk and then you come down here and you press it until the light goes to the latte setting. And then it starts, so you can get in there and see. It'll start warming up the milk and foaming it up. While that milk is going, we are going to go ahead and get an espresso pot out. And what I'm going to add is a splash of vanilla extract. Just add, I have no measurement. Um, a, a dash or two of ground cinnamon. And then yesterday I did three tablespoons of this organic maple syrup and it was way too sweet, so I'm just gonna do two today. And then go ahead and stir those to combine that in the espresso. smells ridiculously good. So the milk is all done. So what you want to do is you want to keep stirring your cup as you stream in the milk. I just have to show you this. Look at the foam. <laughs> oh, I just poured that out on the counter. But look at the foam in the Breville. Just put a couple spoonfuls of this amazing foam on top. And then just to top it off, I put just a small bit of maple syrup on my spoon and then just drizzle that. Over the top. Just look how amazing this looks. It's delicious. All right, so I'm going to unwind a little bit, watch some news, drink my coffee. And then we will catch up in a little bit. Abba's is in his snow gear, so he's his little puffer vest. And then these booties, because his paws get so cold. But you have to see what he does when he walks. Come on, let's go. He's tap dancing. He is tapping. You ready to go? You have your shoes on? The shoes and his coat on. I don't know how you convinced me to do this. It's not that cold. And there's no wind. Bubby, you ready to go? Oh, it's a coop boy. Let's go. And now we're on a hunt for a missing dog boot. The missing boot has been found. We are three minutes into the walk and we've already lost one, one shoe and I just, and I almost just fell down. Um, so here we go. I almost fell again. off his leash a little bit and he doesn't go too far until he looks back to make sure <laughs> that we're still there. There's literally no one around so let him roam free for a little bit. Baba, you're a good boy. You're a good boy, right? You're a good boy. You're a good boy. We are back from our walk. It really <laughs> It's 15 degrees now, that feels like a heat wave. Um, I'm feeling a little lightheaded because I just had coffee this morning and from the workout and the walk, um, which was basically like walking in sand for over a mile, um, I'm just not feeling really great. So I'm gonna get some lunch in me and then, yeah, 
a question that was asked a while ago and then again recently or what are my favorite cookbooks and I have four for like weekly dinners and I wanted to share those like top four cookbooks that I think are just really really great. The first one I'm going to talk about is Deceptively Delicious. I had found it at my sister's and then bought myself a copy. It's by Jessica Seinfeld and it is a how to get your kids to eat more vegetables but it's good for all of us. So almost every single, well, not almost, every single recipe has some integrated vegetable. Like, for example, these rice balls will have some sort of puree in it. And she takes you through all the steps on how to create puree. And you can actually just make it and freeze it. So like these rice balls have sweet potato puree in it. She makes brownies um, with puree. They're just... Great, great recipes. These are the brownies I was telling you about. They have spinach and carrot puree. They're delicious. You cannot taste the spinach. So that's one of my favorite books. Another Jessica Seinfeld book that I absolutely love. This book is the I Can't Cookbook, and it's 100 recipes um, for those who are absolutely terrified. This is good if you are a good cook or if you're just starting. This is just full of great recipes. Actually, the turkey bolognese I just made in the New Year's vlog um, was from this re uh, recipe book. It's just great. The, everything is so simple. She also does a really great job of explaining everything as it goes. Um, yeah, her recipe books are great. I also love that she spiral bounds hers. So they look like they're case bound here, but when you open it, it's actually a spiral so you can like lay them flat and really work with them. Another favorite, favorite one is The Paleo Kitchen by Julie Bauer and George Bryant. What I love about this book is how well it is organized. So it's not just dinner recipes. They actually break it apart from like beef to chicken. I just love how organized it is. I think it's beautifully shot. Like the cookbook itself is really stunning. Um, and the recipes are really, really easy. Yeah, it's just a great, this is one of my favorites. This slow cooker tomatillo chicken is absolutely incredible. And it goes in the slow cooker, which makes it even better. Um, that is a great one. And then lastly, my other favorite, um, Martha Stewart cookbooks can often be intimidating because they are so intense, but the Martha Stewart's dinners at home, it's 52 quick meals to cook for family and friends. They are honestly very, very quick, but sound extremely fancy. Um, but yeah, this is a great, great cookbook. Lots of really great recipes, lots of great tips, but everything is really, really fast. So yeah, those are probably my four go-to kitchen cookbooks with this one being my all-time favorite right now. I'd actually say the two Jessica Seinfeld ones are at the top of my list. Um, if you're not familiar with her, follow her on Instagram and get one of her cookbooks. You will not regret it. So those are the cookbooks that I love and reach for all the time when I'm meal planning. They're just really fantastic. Now, do I have a ton of other ones? Yes, but those, those are my four favorites. Ever since I posted and shared the wallpaper that I used during Vlogmas, a lot of you have been asking where I get them. The answer is I just Google things and I always go with Rifle Paper Company. This is my current wallpaper and I am absolutely obsessed with it. And then I get really weird and every wallpaper has to match. So it's on my phone, it's on my iPad, it's on my work computer. Like I keep the same wallpaper every time. I don't know if that's weird. Does anyone else do that? I make all my wallpapers match. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave this one that's my current favorite linked down below for you so you guys can just like pull it up and set it as your wallpapers because I am loving it. And a lot of you have already commented on this one. You've caught like little snippets of it. Um, so yeah, thought I'd share that. I did my first Instagram live on, was it Friday? I definitely want to do them more um, with a little bit more of like a structured focus because I literally had no clue what I was doing and I just feel like it was rambling. If you joined it, I hope you enjoyed it and that it made some sort of sense. But I will definitely be doing that a lot more just so we can connect and talk and all of those wonderful things. We're having some good conversation on Instagram today though. I uh, posted this picture from our walk. Um, I don't know if it'll focus. And all I wrote was, today on our walk I thought a lot about footprints. Everyone has their own and it leaves an imprint everywhere we go. Our jobs as humans on this earth is to make it a positive one. 
Leave an imprint of positive energy that makes everyone around you better. May your actions and your words uplift, inspire, and manifest greatness in others. And that is the responsibility we have as citizens. Um, and I always often think about a quote from Oprah. And I don't know if it was like directly from her or if she was quoting someone else. But she had signs in her old Harpo office where it said, be responsible for the energy you bring into a space. And I think the space is your workplace, space on the internet, in your home, in the supermarket, any space you enter, you're responsible for that energy that you bring in. And it leaves a lasting impact, um, whether you're there four seconds or an hour. And I really, really try to take that into consideration all the time. Um, and on that Instagram post, you guys talked about like, well, what if someone says something negative about you? Or what if someone does something negative towards you? Like, at the end of the day, that's about them and not you. Um, and just stay focused on what you know to be true. And um, think about your circle of control, and that's your actions. The high road will only lead you to success and also allow you to keep everything uh, that's important to you intact. So... Yeah, that would be my advice to that. And I think that was Lisa who asked that comment. Um, I think that's the way to go. We have had HBO for a very long time. And for some reason, I have never thought about starting my HBO Go account here on the TV. So now that I have, I am watching tons of movies. This is Grey Gardens with Drew Barrymore. Not nearly as good as the original, but it's still very good. Also, if you have never seen the musical Grey Gardens and it ever plays anywhere near you, go see it. The music is fantastic. It's a soundtrack that I really, really love. Um, also, part of my face is really shiny. After we came back from the walk, I washed my face and I put on the Sunday Riley Luna Night Oil, even though it's not night. I just needed like a lot of hydration from the wind and the cold. Um, so, yeah. I'm gonna finish watching Grey Gardens. I'm answering a couple work emails catching up on some comments and I've edited a lot of the footage from this vlog already today um so it will be easier to get to you tonight all right friends I actually was just editing this vlog and it's already like 18 minutes long so I'm going to cut it short so I can enjoy my night before a busy week at work so I'm going to leave it like I leave all of them take care of yourself take care of others and be kind kindness is free give it to everyone until next time bye bye I've been searching all day long, try to be the perfect one. You're holding me without no touch, you don't need chase to.